Do you remember the X95, the first in Princess's X-Class range, a Superfly model? Well, it has now spawned a second model in the X-Class range, the X80. And we're the first channel in the world to be on board this brand new model. And I'm thrilled to be able to take you with me to have a look at it. Let's jump on board and have a closer look. Now, like the X95, it was designed in conjunction with Olazinski design and Pininfarina but it doesn't have the wave piercing hull shape of the X95. This is a full planing hull with twin MAN 1650 or 1900 horsepower engines. And with those larger engines, it will actually do 31 knots. Of course, if you drop it back to displacement speed, it'll do well over a thousand nautical miles. So serious cruising potential, whether you're moving slowly or quickly. But what it shares with the X95 is that super fly design. So you have no lower helm on the main deck, it means the main deck is all living area. Princess reckon it's around 30% larger interior volume than a traditional 80 foot flybridge. It's 82 feet, seven inches this boat, just under 20 feet wide. We'll have more of a closer look at the interior later, of course, but let's start on the outside. As you would expect, a hydraulic bathing platform is standard and this is where you would mount the tender. However, you can have the tender on the back of the flybridge deck and you can launch it with the crane, but then you're robbed of quite a lot of really good living space. So I'd say most people will probably mount the tender down here on this vast platform, which obviously sinks down into the water to help launch and recover the tender, but also help you in and out of the water. You step on board, you immediately see those familiar high quality princess touch points, the gauge of the stainless, the fact it's rounded off at the edges. It just looks and feels really high quality. I love the way the teak extends down the steps and you can see the underlighting under the teak here. Really, really smart. Now under this section, This is just a wet storage locker. You can put wetsuits in there, wet kit, flippers, things like that. Just chuck them in there. You know, they can dry it from there and drain away. Under this section, this boat just, has actually got storage space. I presume that's for the covers, part of the covers anyway. But you can actually have sea bobs in here. You can have two side by side and they'll charge in there as well. So they're in the perfect position just to drop into the water when you want to use them. There's that. And then to starboard, this is where you find access to the crew space. And I think this is the first major surprise on this boat. Because for an 80 footer, it's really quite generous. So we head on down. Now there are a couple of configurations down here. You can lose this mess area and have two more bunks. But actually the mess area obviously is quite nice if you haven't got full crew, you just want the two cabins, then they've got a mess area down here that they can use with a cooktop and a fridge, a microwave oven and a sink. You have one cabin over here. One sleeping space. And then on the starboard side, you have your second sleeping space again with a bit of storage dotted around. Separate bathroom. That's on the port side. Good size actually. Full standing headroom in there for someone of six foot one, six foot two. Nice to have a separate shower cubicle. You know, no shower curtain in here. And obviously a toilet and a sink. And you have engine access through the cockpit deck, as you might expect, but you also have direct access for the crew through this watertight door. You're through here and you're straight into the machinery space, which is a really good size and very, very well laid out. I'll just show you the headroom. As you can see, plenty of space above my head. It's very easy to move around. The walkway leads you directly between both engines, the biggest engines, 1900 horsepower, MAN V12 diesels. It's a little bit tricky to get outboard of them on both sides, actually. This one is actually even more constricted by the optional water maker. Fuel tanks on either side, but you can get down the middle of them very easily. And you have good access to the shaft as well. Straight shafts on 
this boat you can see it just poking out down here this boat has two generators fitted one is tucked down here to the port side and then you have one here on the starboard side you can have a gyroscopic stabilizer on this boat this particular boat has actually got fin stabilizers to take up less room here in the machinery space so as i said up this ladder you'd be into the cockpit that's a quick inspection hatch but we'll head back out through the crew space and onto the main deck you can access the cockpit from both sides on the starboard side here you have the shore power connections on the other side is where you find the the deck shower we'll head up the starboard side again just Look at the way that this fair lead is integrated. I love the way that it's sort of in the moulding. Multi-directional fair lead. Really nice big cleat. It's a winch as well, so you can tighten the lines. I mean, it looks good as well. It's functional, but it's also beautiful. It's the way Princess do things. And we're here into the cockpit. Nice big wrap of seating here. Good to see that you've got proper backrests on this side, so everybody should be comfortable no matter where they're sitting. Of course, this table opens up. You've got little finger slots here. So you can open that table up. But when it's over, you see you've got a grab handle, you've got some cup holders set in. But then that's a really nice space. Lots of floor space here as well. This is actually a bespoke piece of furniture for this particular owner. It's not something that Princess would usually include. It's actually a shoe box as well as a seat. A standard you have this little bar here, or you can have a full proper bar that you can sort of stand behind, a more substantial bar. But that's just a slightly neater arrangement there on the port side. That's the engine hatch, the quick inspection hatch down into the machinery space that I mentioned earlier. If we look down here, you've got really good access to the fuel shutoff bilges, all nicely aligned, exactly where you need them if you need to get to them in emergency. What we'll do is we'll stay on this deck and we'll move up forward. Really, really good wide side decks. And they're covered overhead as well. You get a bit of shelter and protection as you walk down. But the rails run all the way along. They're a really good height. You can walk you know, one foot next to the other. It's a very easy boat to negotiate when you're crewing. Now this side door leads directly to the galley, which we will have a look at later on but we'll keep going forward. Someone's just leaving in their helicopter. That's what that noise is, so I apologize for that. Here you have masses of storage space. There's one of these lockers on each side, perfect for just lobbing the fenders in. Fenders are very big on a boat this size, so to have dedicated space to throw them is, is very helpful for the crew. Now this is an optional extra, the hot tub. As standard, you have seating here, C-shaped seating with a little table. But that is quite a luxurious addition to have this hot tub up here on the foredeck with those views forward out over the bow. Really quite special. These sides you have a bit of storage and then these lift out to give you access to the plumbing for the hot tub, etc. And right forward, obviously you have the ground tackle twin anchors. Again, it's really substantial proper stuff, fair leads built into the top sides here. This here is the escape hatch for the forward cabin. And then you have the anchor locker just forward. Up she comes, very powerful gas rams. Got remote controls to the windlasses here. Note you've got drains inside this runoff here so that water drains away. Doesn't get caught up on the deck if you take a big one over the bow. And then a very, very deep locker which you would not want to drop your wallet in. But you can see, got the chain separated there, and then just masses of space for storing fenders, bulky kit, safety equipment, whenever you wish, really useful space. And very powerful rams. There she goes. Notice there's low level lighting all the way around to provide some light after dark.
note here you've got deck drains built in so if there's water rushing down the side decks they go down there and into the bilges so that you don't get water flooding through the cockpit and we're back into the cockpit and from there we shall head into the saloon three part sliding doors so they slide and then slide again so they open right up and this is the main saloon and I need to convey how lovely it feels and smells in here it just smells of quality it really is a lovely peaceful and beautifully finished place see the television pops up from behind here now this is just a show table actually the the main table in here is slightly different to this but effectively it drops down to become a coffee table this is also your main dining space on this variant which we'll go into a bit more later on but it also rises up to be the dining table and you have a couple of chairs that you can put around this side so you can have more people dining around here as this on this layout is your main internal dining space and i really love the way this galley works you can just feel like this would become the heart of the boat you know you draw up to this bar area have a drink have a coffee in the morning just works really well and, and the bar stalls obviously add to that and actually this section here is a bulkhead so this will raise up connect to the ceiling so if you've got crew you can close the entire area off you've got a sliding pocket door here so if it's you on board with your family and you're running the boat and cooking you can have it all open plan and it's very sociable but if you've got crew on board then you can close it all off and they have direct access to the side deck through this door so they needn't disturb people who are dining in the saloon they can go all the way around the boat from this point here but you can see the effect from within if you've got it all open it's very sociable it's a really effective layout the galley is really nicely finished it has a proper granite worktop looks and feels really high quality you've got induction cooking on this side twin sinks dishwasher and this little alcove here is pretty much designed for a coffee machine on future boats princess say they will put some lighting in here because it's a bit dark you could have some down lighters under here or maybe some strip lighting around here and a bit more light actually would would work in here um, but this is a nice spot to have your, your coffee machine just sits there on the counter ready to go excellent cold storage really big american style fridge there you've also got some cooling drawers yeah if you're gonna be on board for a long time you need plenty of cooling space and this boat certainly delivers that Now this is a talking point of the X80, the internal staircase. Not many boats have these anymore, and I think they're brilliant. I love the internal connection between the decks. I think it works really well. It means it's very easy to get from the galley up to the top deck, and it just gives you another access point. Of course, you have your steps out in the cockpit. You can see them over there to starboard. But to be able to get up from inside the boat is really nice. And I love the way they've integrated it because if this was just a traditional sort of blocked in staircase, it would loom over you, it would make it very dark. But the use of glass, the fact it's next to a window, and I love the fact that these treads are completely floating. They're not actually connected to the glass at all here. They're only connected on this side, really elegant, and it's all downlit as well. If you're gonna have a staircase in here, this is the way to put it in here without it sort of dominating the whole space. Works really well. We move forward. And you have the day heads. Princess made the point they are going to move the toilet over because it's a little bit close to this bulkhead here. But yeah, that's, a, that's your day heads. That's what guests will use in the day so they don't have to go down onto the lower deck. And then as we move forward, we get to the really unique aspect of this boat. Because you have the helm upstairs that leaves this forward end free for either this, which is this pretty spectacular cabin, or you can have this as a dinette. So in that formation, you'd have seats running all the way around this forward end here. You have the table, you have a sideboard, and then you have some chairs on the other side of the table. But this really does have a super yacht feel, this cabin, having this up here on the main deck away from guests. Obviously you've got all round glass, so the views are wonderful. And you have direct access through this sliding door. This slides right across up onto the foredeck. And on this boat, into the hot tub that we saw earlier on, or, or the seating, almost a private terrace straight out from your cabin. You know, that really does set this boat apart. And it means that you get the 
heads over here on the starboard side sliding doors and then you have separate toilet here and what a view from your ensuite toilet that's not bad at all is it and then the other side you find the shower really really good headroom in here in fact the whole cabin if i stand in the middle you can see really really good levels of headroom here you have your wardrobe it's safe in here as well and there's another wardrobe behind the door the woodwork is absolutely glorious this is a gloss walnut there's two lighter options as well but this is a very nice classy option looks really good so yeah open these doors up and you're out onto the side deck that's a really nice feature but you know you can have it as a, a sort of office space if you want it's really quite flexible you can use this area however you wish doesn't miss the bureau here you can get ready and then obviously the television is set into the bulkhead here now if we go back into the saloon i'll just show you they very helpfully got some layout plans so you can see how the various layouts actually work so there you have the standard layout and you can see here that is the forward end in the dining configuration this boat has the cabin forward cabin there and if you don't have that you have the dining arrangement and then whatever you do you have the four cabins downstairs vip and then you have a double guest twin guest and another double forward so that's another benefit of having the forward cabin here is the amount of amazing sleeping space you've got for guests if you want to charter then this is a phenomenal layout for that on a boat of 82 feet so let's go down and have a further look at that accommodation i should say if you have the dining room layout you lose this bulkhead because this is a wardrobe which you obviously don't need if it's a dining room so this is actually a much more open staircase if you have the dining room layout forward anyway let's head downstairs when we're on the way down you find some simply enormous storage bins they are hugely deep you just can't have enough storage on boats as we always say and that is a good example and then you're into this lobby area here where you've got a mirror you've got a little bit of storage it's quite a nice thing to be met with when you come down here i love the fact that they've got this sort of levered effect here on this paneling looks really really smart if we turn this way you find a washer dryer here and then just a little bit of storage above and we're walking aft now to what is the amidships on this version vip amazingly if you think the master cabin's on deck then this is your vip cabin in wow what a cabin headroom is the same as upstairs six foot two six foot three no problem this is a big big cabin it would be a toss-up as to which one you'd have i think as the owner yes that one has spectacular views and access to the foredeck but the sheer size of this cabin does make it feel extremely luxurious completely flat floor lovely big island berth and they've split the wardrobe and the bathroom across the back of the cabin here so this is a the ensuite with twin sinks separate shower cupola of course every single shower on the boat's got a rain shower head and every cabin has its own bathroom another big window just to flood this space with natural light lovely flooring as well marble flooring I like the way the sinks just sort of emerge from this top as well really lovely effect a bit of storage here television up on the wall of course we talk about the woodwork and the detailing i love the way that on these drawers the wood just it just curves around the side here and then this stainless steel detailing follows it around really beautifully done a bureau here more storage dotted around down here you've obviously got storage in your bedside tables drawers pop out like that and then a really nice walk-in wardrobe a big mirror inside it you've got this area here is laid in suede you can put jewelry down doesn't slide around loads of hang storage 
a safe as well, and then some some drawers up here. All really nicely finished in in the gloss walnut. I love this space. So we'll head forward now, and we get to the other guest cabins. So the starboard side, you have a double. has its own big wardrobe here and also has storage dotted all along the side here underneath the hull window there's another cupboard over on that side get around either side of the bed they've got their own bedside tables and as I said all en suite every cabin it's got its own bathroom with a separate shower cubicle and those rain shower heads Head back out of here and keep going forward. To port, there's a twin. There's a twin cabin. There's its hanging wardrobe as you walk in through the door. Television mounted on the bulkhead as well at the end of the bed. And this is its bathroom. If we go right forward, if you don't have the cabin upstairs, this is your VIP. But on this boat, this is just, I'll say just, another guest cabin. And a beautiful one at that. See that motif follows us all the way through the boat in the accommodation, that works really nicely. Loads of storage in here, hanging storage there. These pop out, so big storage. Sections in here, a couple of uh, cupboards down there. Obviously you've got natural light coming in through the hull windows. Ventilation as well. There's the escape hatch there. We saw that on deck, but that's your escape hatch from this cabin. Another full hanging wardrobe on this side and a bureau. And then behind the door, this cabin has got a great bathroom. It's a really good size. Very, very spacious indeed. Again, with a really nice shower. It's lovely. As I said, for charter spec, having this amount of accommodation, all with its own bathrooms, on an 82 footer, pretty special. So we'll wind our way back up this staircase to the main deck, and then we'll take that internal staircase that I've been enthusing about up to the top deck. The Superfly, so it's dubbed. And this deck is split between indoor and outdoor space. You've still got your outdoor flybridge deck there, but you've got this space as well, which you can air condition in the summer. You can come in here, cool off. Television pops up from here. You've got AV control in here. You've got storage to the left of that. Glass panelling overhead. This isn't the sunroof, it is just glass panelling. But again, it just draws more and more natural light down into this area. And the views from here really are pretty wonderful. And before we head outside, we'll have a look at the bridge. This is the only helm station on this boat and it's very purposeful, business-like. You've got bonning screens here, show everything from your cameras to your navigation, radar, all completely customizable. And you sit right in the middle of this boat with a wonderful view down that coach roof and then you can just see the bow rail. You can see the far extreme of the boat from here. Like the compass set up here right in your eye line just where it should be. Twin shafts this boat as I said. You've got your throttles here. You've got your bow and stern thrusters. Proportional bow and th stern thrusters on this side. Trim tabs etc. All as you'd expect but really nicely executed and you know this is a passage maker. So you have this area here where people can just gather around the skipper and keep them company on longer passages. This is a really smart central helm pedestal, fully adjustable, electric seats here, footrest. And then you've even got a little chart area here, proper chart area. Where you can fold your charts, map light, really nicely done. So, as I said, you're only home station. However, you can have a third station down in the cockpit, so you can have a wing station down there, which will be perfect for stern two mooring. 
when we come out here you have another wing station so this just pops up easy as that and then here on the starboard side you've got full control of both engines obviously through the throttles you've got repeaters for the bow and stern thruster emergency stop for the engines and then you've got anchor control from here as well so if you're coming alongside you can be here with your hand on the throttle and you've got this wonderful view down the starboard side you can really easily check your proximity to the quayside another boat that works really nicely and then it just folds away easy as that now of course you haven't got the amount of outdoor living space of a regular flybridge but they have supplied sunbathing space up here just pure sunbathing space you can have this so they flip up to become sort of a pose seating if you prefer but actually just having sunbathing space here pure sun pad area is actually a really good use of space here and you've actually got a cooler here as well so you're never too far away from some cold drinks and then on this side this is just more storage now unlike the x95 you can see you can walk all the way around this deck on the x95 this one they haven't got the beam to do that so it is blocked off but you have got very long storage voids on both sides so it's not wasted space but it does mean that to get back to the aft end of this deck you go back into the wheelhouse which i should mention you can close this off you can see you've got sliding doors here so again if there's a skipper on board you can close this off and they can concentrate on navigation and it means that this area still can be used by guests to socialize they can close themselves off from the wheelhouse again you've got three part sliding doors here to open this area up to the aft end of the top deck of course i've just opened one panel but they do slide all the way across and here you have the aft end the sun deck great big sweep of seating just look at the size of that table really really good size perfect for our fresco dining you can see this boat's got the bimini that pops out so you can have a bit of shade over this area this is just a lounging area a place to have a drink for which it works very nice you can actually swivel this module around so it faces the dinette so it makes it you know facing to the boat a bit more if you want to sort of extend the, the socializing area while you're dining but this is a great spot for a, a relaxed sundowner wet bar over on this side this has got a grill and a sink you've got a drawer cooler here and then storage on this side and this side you have the bin and this boat's actually got an optional television here as well so that pops up from this unit it means you can have a film on or some sport while you're out here dining and then lastly under here there is yet another cool chest you see it's got a drain in it as well so if you've got ice in there and it melts it just drains away you don't have to clear it out very nice and then as i said you have traditional access to this top deck via this staircase So there you have it, the Princess X80. I do hope you enjoyed that tour. We are gonna see you try this boat at some point, so look out for that, because obviously you wanna know how it goes out at sea, but that's giving you hopefully a nice detailed look around the boat itself. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. I'm Jack Haynes, and I'll see you on the next one.